Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be looking at a much requested Hornby Diesel. So far I've looked at Class 66s from two different manufacturers, Backman and Hattons, but of course there is a third manufacturer that produces a Class 66 and that is Hornby and this is their Class 66. Now interestingly enough the Hornby Class 66 really was taking a back seat in their range until of course Hattons came along and introduced theirs and then mysteriously Hornby produced a billion different Class 66s and they're all over the place. And if you didn't know already that that's kind of just something Hornby does these days. They wait for a smaller manufacturer to announce something and then they flood the market with them. Uh, it's their idea of healthy competition, supposedly. But on the plus side, it does give you more choice. Well, it gives you more choice if you're looking for a Class 66. I would argue that overall it gives you less choice because they use up production capacity, which might otherwise have been used to produce a model that wasn't already being done. Yes, that's logic for you, isn't it? But there is a clear advantage to the Hornby Class 66 before you even take a look at the model, and that is the price. So the RRP for Hornby 66 is £74.99, which is very, very inexpensive. And actually at the retailers, I bought this from D-Rails, for instance, for £67.49. So it's definitely not a lot of money for a locomotive of this size, and certainly it's about half the price of a Hatton's Class 66. So there is value in that, isn't there? Also though, notice from the box, this is not being marketed as a Hornby Railroad locomotive. This is in the Hornby Railways range, which is an interesting choice because I know for a fact that the tooling for this dates back over 20 years. So how it's actually going to compare to other Hornby Railways products, I'm not too sure. But that's the whole purpose of doing a review. So we're going to get this out today, see what it's like and see how it matches up to other Hornby locos. And of course, more crucially, other Class 66s. OK, here we go. So I'm pretty sure that this Class 66 was initially produced by Lima, which gives you some idea of the age of the tools and such. However, even though the actual bodywork and other parts of the tooling will be that old, clearly the latest Hornby 66s will have been produced with more modern decoration and printing techniques and such. So the livery ought to be really, really impressive on this. And as you can see, I've got this Malcolm Rail Class 66, which does seem to be quite intricate in terms of livery. So we'll see how that looks when I get this thing out. And also, if you are interested in getting the Hornby Class 66, I will include affiliate links in the description if I can find them. For now, though let me show you the end of the box so the version i've gone for is r3920 it is the malcolm logistics coco class 66 and mine is the running number 66434 and it is dcc ready i assume with an eight pin socket but i will take the body off later on and find out for sure and then on the back of the box you can see this was classified route availability 7 which just describes whereabouts the loco is able to travel on the network in the middle, you've got a brief history of the class, which is, again, six paragraphs. So pause and read it if you'd like to. And then on the far end, you've got the diagrams drawn to help design the model. And these are dated 1999. So yes, indeed, this does date back over 20 years. So let's find out then what this is like. I'll be very interested to know what sort of model this is and also whether or not it's received any updates. I mean, for less than 70 pounds, is this gonna have loads of great features? Is it gonna have lights and sprung buffers and such? Probably not, but then again, it is marketed as part of the Hornby Railways range where you would expect it to have those features. Well, there's only one way to find out. So let's pull this box apart and take a look. All right. Wow, well, straight away, you can see that the livery is pretty darn good on this. Yeah, it's it looks like one of those sort of wraps that they did with the Beatles yellow submarine set. Uh, I think that's going to be the same technique in decoration, isn't it? I'll put a link up there if you want to see it. Could be wrong, but that's what it looks like. Yeah, the full body appears to have had printing on it. OK, well, let's pull this out, see what it's like. Weight, obviously, it's not going to be anywhere close to the weight of the Backman or the Hatton 66 although we'll find out just how much less it does weigh when I weigh it later on. But obviously that's all reflected in the price. All right, let's take a look at this then. This should be interesting. This is the Class 66 Operating and Maintenance Instructions, and it also covers the 59 as well, which is a very similar looking logo. 
Okay, lubrication, oh, it's just the basic one. Yeah, basic lubrication points. Accessories, shows you where to fit all the different parts. Body removal, that's handy. And DCC ready, you can see that this has the eight pin decoder socket, as I thought. And it will be also very interesting to see whether this loco is all wheel drive. Obviously, I've bought diesels far cheaper than this that were all wheel drive, and they were not marketed by the sort of leading brand in model railways as part of their main range. So yeah, hopefully this will be mechanically quite advanced. I won't tell you what my expectations are, although I'm pretty sure you can guess if you're familiar with this sort of Hornby model. Anyway, only time will tell. Here we go then, let's push this out. Let's see what else you get. So I think the instructions gave it away, but you've got alternative panels for the front. I think you can fit these instead of the couplings. So if you want a more realistic end that doesn't have a hole in it for the coupling, you can fit those. And then you've just got the vacuum fittings and such for the buffer beams, which do seem to be quite nice and fine. So that's pretty good to see. Okay, are you ready then? I'll be very interested to see what this model is like. Don't forget, this is a Hornby Railways model, so it will be judged as such, but it is a cheap one. It is fairly cheap. All right, let's take a look. How's the finish? All right, so yeah, it's a fairly typical Hornby finish, a little bit on the plasticky side, but it doesn't look too bad, if you ask me. All right, let's pull this thing out. Okay, so yeah, it does, it just feels like the Lima model, which I guess makes sense. Not dreadfully heavy. Let's flip this over and have a look underneath. So I can see that we've got traction tyres fitted. Come on, this is not a railroad model. This is a Hornby Railways model. We don't want traction tyres. And yes, we do only have, I think in total, two driven axles on this loco. Yeah, that's not really what you'd expect to see on a modern Hornby Railways locomotive. But uh, yeah, okay, that is what it is. More on the mechanism later on. First of all, though, here comes a potted history of the Class 66 in real life. And then we'll take a closer look at the level of detail on this model. Okay, let's do it. During the mid-1990s, the ageing fleet of British diesels was in desperate need of updating, and so the EWS placed what would be the largest order of British loco since the steam era. The Class 66 was actually produced in Canada, and it was first shipped to Britain in 1998, and it quickly proved to be a very solid and reliable design, and the class was actually based on the earlier Class 59, which had made quite a name for itself due to its reliability as well. Now these initially were classified as the Class 61, which is quite interesting, and they actually replaced many older diesel designs, making them instrumental in the modernisation of the British diesel fleet, although this did make them a little bit unpopular with more classic diesel enthusiasts, since the 66 is often blamed for the demise of those earlier lovely diesel designs. 455 66s were produced over nearly 20 years, I believe the last was produced in 2015. And this example was delivered to Newport Docks in 2008, and it's been in this livery from 2011, I believe. So there it is, the Hornby Class 66 up close and personal for you. And now I'm going to be honest with you because Hornby haven't been. And I'm going to say that this is a railroad locomotive. Everything about this, the level of detail, the features, the mechanism, you name it, it's all Hornby Railroad. I suspect the only reason this hasn't been marketed as a Hornby Railroad product is because that would have put off serious modelers from buying it. You see Hornby Railroad, you think it's for beginners, you think it's a basic model, and you don't buy it if you consider yourself serious about modelling. In other words, I think this is in the railways range because that's where it will make the most money and not because that's where it belongs and not because that is a realistic description of the locomotive. Now, to be absolutely clear, you may feel that everything negative that I'm about to say about this locomotive is completely reasonable for the price, which is £75 RRP, and that is completely fine. If you think this model is okay for that money, then that is fine, that is your opinion. I personally am not going to make a judgement on that right now, I'm just going to describe what I see and then later on I will let you know what I think in the form of a rating. So first things first then, the weight, this comes in at 391 grams, which is obviously very light for a loco of this size. It's lighter than the Backman Class 20, and of course it's around half the weight of the Hatton's Class 66, although again this is around half the price, so that is probably fair enough. Now the decoration, and I'm saying this really quite objectively, is horrible on closer inspection. Now the colouring and the quality of the actual artwork seems absolutely fine, but the finish on it is almost entirely flat, which does not look great. 
you've got areas where the wrap has just not been applied properly and it's just chipped off or whatever that's exactly as it came out of the box and because this whole sort of side panel here is effectively just a film that's been put over the locomotive a little bit like a sticker it's completely ruined the detail underneath so if you look at the main body you've completely lost that corrugated effect that's on the body underneath and here is the original Lima class 66 and here is that corrugated detail just to prove that it is there on this loco it's completely lost but it doesn't end there because wherever there is a rivet or another little bit of detail you get these huge air bubbles trapped underneath the film which just makes the body sort of swell and it's all spongy you can put your nail to that and it will just sponge away it's absolutely awful i mean these are supposed to be doors but they're completely flat there's just no definition there at all there's just two printed white lines which are supposed to represent the handrails either side of the door but they are just literally completely flat. The only details that still exist on the model are the grills, because those areas are actually cut out of the decorated wrap. Besides that, you've just got absolutely no detail across the bodies at all, which would be bad enough if it was just perfectly flat, but because you've got all of this just bobbling and air trapped underneath it, it looks absolutely terrible. That's not to say there was very much detail here to begin with though, because as you can see, all of the grills and such are just plastic, they're just moulded plastic. Uh, the ones on the top, again, it's all just moulded plastic with nothing behind it or anything. The underframe detail is extremely basic. There is, you know, some wiring and bits of pipework and such, but obviously it's all a part of the moulding. The same is true of the bogey details, although you do have the steps which have been picked out in the yellow paint. Although, of course, they lead to nowhere because you've got no doors at all above them. That's crazy. How awful that looks. I can't get over that. And then on the ends, you've got a little bit of painted detail, although it is clear to see that we have no working lights at all on this model. Clearly, no sprung buffers. Yeah, who's surprised? This handrail, though, and this little square bracket are actually separately fitted, although the wipers are just a painted part of the glazing and are not separately fitted. And the cab detail is very, very basic indeed. There is some moulded detail inside there, but none of it has been decorated. There are NEM couplings on this model, which is a slight Christmas miracle, isn't it? If I pull that out, yeah, you can see that is an NEM coupling. So that is at least one upgrade we can add to the non-existent list that this loco has received. And I think we've literally come to the end. Oh, and there's the separately fitted sort of exhaust system up on the top which is painted into a different colour so it stands out. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've reached the end. So, I mean, to summarise it in a sentence, it's a cheap locomotive with a horrendous livery and a complete lack of detail. There you go, that's all I can say. It is cheap, so it's got that going for it, but then again, it's still £70. And would you rather lose £70 and gain this, or just keep the £70? Well, that's a question for the comment section, I suppose. Personally, I guess I would have kept the £70 or possibly spent a little bit more and bought a decent Class 66. However, that's to say nothing of the mechanism and the performance of this model. Don't hold your breath for it, but there's every chance this could be at least a good runner, even though we know the mechanism is poor. So I will remove the body, I'll show you what's going on inside, and then we'll give it a try. Won't that be fun? So there she is, the Hornby Malcolm Rail Class 66 down onto the track and ready for the first test. Now, the mechanism for a railroad loco, I would say, is just about passable. For a Hornby Railways loco, it's obviously ridiculously naff. And even though the loco was cheap, it's not really cheap enough to make this mechanism okay. But we'll start with the positives. So the Loco does have all wheel pickup. It's got wiper style pickups on each wheel, which is pretty good. The bad news is the base keeper plate of the motor bogey is held on by six clips and no screws, which means that it's very, very difficult to get access to the wheel set and the gears for maintenance purposes without damaging those clips. So I'm not actually going to remove the base for you, but I can tell you that there are no proper bearings on this Loco, no turned brass bearings. Uh, it's just a plastic chassis and the axles sit into that. So wear and tear shouldn't be too bad, I would have thought. But make no mistake, this is not a quality mechanism. And of course, two wheels do have the rubber tyres because obviously the Loco is light and it only has four driven wheels on the entire model, which these days is just not acceptable, is it? I've bought, you know, 30 quid AliExpress Locos that have all-wheel drive, so there's no good excuse for that, really. 
Having removed the body, you can see the chassis, which is entirely plastic. Unfortunately, it's just weighted down with this sort of stack of metal weights, which are hot glued into the base of the Loco. The mechanism is all contained within this plastic motor bogey, which is largely unserviceable. You can take them apart if you want to, but I wouldn't really recommend it. I do believe it's got a five pole motor inside, which is good but no flywheel of any kind, which is bad. And there is the eight pin socket. There's plenty of space around there. So fitting this with DCC should be no problem. And there's also lots of space for speakers and sound if you wanted to, not sure why you would though. It would be a little bit like putting lipstick on a pig at this point. The gauging though is okay. So you've got 14.4 mil on most back-to-backs. A few of them showed 14.5. Both of those values are absolutely fine. Right, let's give this a try then. I should say there are no lights on this model of any kind. That's a real shame, isn't it? Again, that AliExpress Loco I looked at had proper directional LEDs on it. This doesn't, again, in my opinion, it's not cheap enough to justify having no lights. Okay, but it does have a five pole motor, which means it may actually be able to do a decent crawl. So let's give this a go forwards direction. Let's see if it actually works to start with. <laughs> Um, well, it did work. It crawled forwards and then it stopped. Okay, well, that's not good. Is it not? Do you, is it not railed on the track properly? No, it's done it again. Hang on. Right, so it ain't that reliable straight out of the box. Hasn't been run in yet. Okay, <laughs> well it seems to now be working without cutting out immediately, which is a good sign. This has not yet been run in of course, so it won't necessarily be performing at its best until it has done. But we shall see how it performs right out of the box. Let's get it off these points first of all though. Yeah, it's not exactly consistent, is it? <laughs> right, come on then Malcolm, let's see you crawl, <laughs> if you can. Here we go. So it's just... Well, I wouldn't call it crawling. I would say that it's occasionally jerking forwards. A bit more. Yeah, loads of cogging. That's probably because there's no flywheel. Mind you, for a five pole motor, I'm surprised it's not smoother than this, but like I say, it might get better with some running in. Let's try it in the other direction. <laughs> well, any crew on board are gonna be absolutely sick to death of this after a very short amount of time. I think it's stopped again now. Oh no, a bit more. Yeah, I mean, that's all right. At that speed, it's a bit smoother. And at the higher speeds, hmm. I don't know if it's the traction tires causing that, but it ain't that consistent, is it? Okay, so to put it politely, there is some room for improvement in the performance here, isn't there? Look at that, come on. I'm not impressed with the amount of torque either. It keeps needing a helping hand. Okay, so 50% speed. We'll send this around the track. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> it's, it's got all wheel pickup, so there's no reason why it should keep cutting out like that. Right, 50% speed. Let's run it in and then let's get done with this thing. Okay, well, it's working. <laughs> That's quite a generous way to describe what it's doing. It's a bit inconsistent, yeah. That's pretty polite, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it seems to be struggling. It slows down a little bit once in a while. Um, yes, on curves, but not necessarily just on curves. I can only hope that as the motor wears in and as the pickups start to wear in, that it gets better. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Because at the moment, it's definitely not cheap enough to make all of the problems with it okay but maybe it will be much better after 30 minutes in each direction. So stay tuned and I will feed back in just a second. All right, folks, see you in a bit. Okay, folks, I am back and running in is complete. And yeah, it does seem to be a little bit more consistent now. Overall, I would say for the money, the performance is adequate. It's not amazing or anything like that, but to say this is a budget loco, I would say the performance is all right. Because of the lack of flywheel, you do tend to get quite jerky performance. It's not the most controllable loco in the world. And also because of the traction tires, there is no wheel slip or anything. So, you know, if you hit it with speed, it's gonna fly off at that speed. And of course, 
it stops dead as well because there is just no opportunity for wheel slip. The pulling power is okay, I suppose, 0.46 newtons, which is obviously way less than the Backman and the Hatton's Class 66. And to say this has got traction tyres, it's not that impressive, is it really? But it should be adequate for most people, I would have thought, unless you want to haul really, really large trains or something. So to test the pulling power in practice, I've got these open hoppers ready to test. These are those AliExpress ones I bought quite cheap, and there's quite a lot of them, I think 12 or something. So I'm very curious to see how the loco handles a load. So let's set this into reverse. Oh, I didn't try the crawl again, did I? Oh, I must do that. Okay, crawl. All right, so it sort of hobbled forwards. Is it gonna do any more? Shall I help it? Yeah, so when it does move, there's a lot of cogging, but that's not too critical because it just keeps stopping at the slow speed. So there's no torque there. I'll turn it up a little bit more and a little bit more. Still cogging at that speed, I'm surprised. And a bit more. Uh, so it's about that speed, it's starting to get a bit smoother. So, like I say, it's probably adequate. I mean, I always say a good crawl demonstrates a good quality mechanism, but we've seen the mechanism, we know it's not that great a quality, so it's no surprise that the crawl isn't great, but it's all right. Okay, let's go and couple to the train then, see how this works. Okay. Right, that's coupled, and I've got to say, it looks pretty good from any sort of distance when coupled to a train. I suppose distance is really the only way to fix this model, because if you look at it up close, it looks pretty awful. Anyway, here we go. Not too fast. Yep, so it's moving them. Pretty cool. And then on the middle line, I've got a Backman Class 66. And actually these days, the Backman 66 is not that much more expensive. I think we're talking 110, 20 pounds from the retailers. And, I mean, the level of detail is definitely upgraded. You've got definitely better grills. You've got the lighting and such. And the mechanism is so much better as well. You've got all-wheel drive on this, lots of pickups. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the 66 I would be going for. I think this, the Hattons, are the Hattons ones more or less sold out now? Possibly. I mean, my experience with the Hatton 66 was amazing. But unfortunately, it sounds as though a lot of people have had quality problems with those which is a real shame because it was an amazing model. And then on the inside line, here's a relic for you. <laughs> this is the Lima 66, which uses the same body that Hornby's current 66 uses. But the crazy thing is this model right here is more detailed than my Hornby Railways Class 66 because this hasn't got the horrible wrapped decoration and so the detail is actually much more pronounced on this model. So in 20 years, all Hornby has been able to do is downgrade the detail and spoil the decoration. Obviously the mechanism's a bit better on the Hornby one. It's quieter and smoother, although the Lima one's still pretty good and powerful. All right, so not a good model. Although, to be fair, most of that is due to the sort of vinyl wrapping, if you will. I think there might be, oh, I think there might be Hornby 66s which don't have the vinyl wrap around them, you know, which are decorated in a more conventional way. And so if they look better, if they're done well and the detail isn't obscured by some bizarre sticker across the whole body, then maybe those would be the ones to go for. Yes, they're still gonna have the slightly lacklustre mechanism and the performance will be largely the same as this, but those are a bit more forgivable, I think, at this price tag. I am glad it's cheap. Obviously, if this was over £100, everything here would be all the worse. But I still think this is missing the mark for £70, isn't it? I think the basics on a model should always be right, regardless of the price. In order for a model to be worth buying for any amount of money, the basics have to be right, don't they? And looking at the side of this model, it's just, it's just not something I can see many people wanting to own. So yeah, beware of the Hornby 66s. I have heard good reviews inexplicably, so I'm guessing those really must be for the 66s without all the intricate artwork on the side. If you want a Hornby 66, definitely go with one of those and don't buy the ones with the vinyl wraps on because they're not done well, they're not done properly, and they look awful, particularly if you're looking at it at, I don't know, less than an arm's length away. 
And now for my ratings then for the Hornby Class 66. Now, yes, this is a budget model, so I had some expectation for the level of detail to be basic and whatnot. But even budget models are supposed to be nicely made. And for £70, this Loco should have had more detail and it should have had more features and it should have been better quality than what I actually got here today. So the level of detail, I've given one and a half star and yeah, this is no hyperbole, I am serious, it is deserving of a one and a half star terrible decoration not only is the decoration not done very nicely it also covers up what tiny amount of detail is there so that you've lost all of the door details the corrugated metal textured details all of that is completely gone obviously you've got no lights plastic grills with not much detail to them no sprung buffers very basic cabs with nothing painted and all molded detail with very little in the way of separately fitted parts performance was slightly better than the level of detail Although at the lower speeds it does cog quite badly and I have noticed it run with quite a bit of inconsistency at times. It's also not that great to control because of the lack of flywheel so it accelerates and decelerates very quickly. It comes to a sudden stop of course because of the traction tyres. Yeah, it's not the greatest performer in the world but I would have said this is quite adequate for what you pay. The pulling power then at 0.46 newtons, that's equivalent to around 28 coaches on straight and level track. To say this Loco has traction tyres, that is not too remarkable. That is actually less than the Hornby Railroad A4 locomotive, which doesn't have traction tyres, and it's only a touch more than half the pulling power of the Backman Class 66, and that too does not have any rubber traction tyres. So the pulling power is not that great when you consider that this is using rubber to help it along. The mechanism then, again, this has got to be two stars. Not a lot to shout about on the mechanism here. It's got rubber traction tyres. Only two of the six axles are driven, which is not great. Completely plastic chassis with no proper bearings. No flywheel on the motor at all, although it does have a five pole motor, so it gets a few marks for that. Quality then, again, it's not great on quality either. I've had to give this two stars. First of all, because of the decoration wrapping, it's just not worked. It hasn't worked properly. It's bubbly, there's air trapped under it, and it covers up a lot of the details. The chassis is all plastic, and it only weighs what it does because someone has hot glued a stack of weights inside there. It's not exactly a quality solution, and the mechanism, of course, too, isn't that high a quality with just that single, one-size-fits-all motor bogey. It's very, very basic. Value for money then, ROP £74.99, I bought this from D-Rails for £67.49, so yes that's not a lot of money, it's not £150 like the Hatton's 66 was, but it's still £70, right, and for £70 there's still some expectation for a degree of quality, and certainly having seen what can be done for much less than this with that AliExpress <laughs> electric loco I looked at, and other inexpensive locos, this is not exactly a bargain, but it's not quite a rip-off either, although maybe you might consider it to be a rip-off. I've given this four star then on value for money, which I think may be a little bit generous, but hey, we need something to help the score along. Okay, overall then, that is a score of 5.23 out of 10. Don't forget folks, this loco is in the railways range. This is not a railroad loco, it's crazy stuff. Let's put that into the ranking then. There it is, 39th place, that is bottom below the MyTrain 040. Hornby, is this your idea of competition? Because I don't call this competition. I call this flooding the market with an inferior product which demonstrates to the world how much better than you your competitors are. I, was that the idea? Because <laughs> that's what you did. Well, there you have it then, folks. That is the end of my review of the Hornby Class 66. In summary, very misleading of Hornby to sell this as a Hornby Railways loco because that suggests that it's detailed and good. And as I hope this review has demonstrated for you, that is not the case. The model is a railroad loco at best with slightly better detail. So I don't know if you really wanted to be generous, you could put it into the railroad plus range. But then again, because of how horrible the decoration's actually been done, it's not exactly a plus, is it? And it's not exactly something you'd want to pay extra for. I'm all for cheap models, but you still need to get what you pay for, even if what you're paying isn't that much. And so I can't recommend the Hornby 66, although I do know some have had good experiences with them. So yeah, you make your own decision on that. And if you want to let me know what that decision is, I'd be very interested to hear it down in the comment section. For now though, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, like I always say, I enjoy reviews, even if the models are bad. Doesn't matter if a model's good or not. You know, it's talking about models and it's looking at models 
and it's running trains and that can never be bad even if the models themselves are so i hope you've enjoyed it even though it wasn't the most positive review of the year <laughs> and i will see you very very soon hopefully with some models that are a little bit better all right cheers folks you take care have a good one